bring in Congressman Thaddeus McCotter. He's a Republican from Michigan. So, Congressman, let me ask uh, right off the bat, uh, what is your reaction to this compromise bill? Uh, you know, I, I know we don't know a lot about it at this point, but what you've heard so far, what do you think? Well, Rebecca, you point out one of the fundamental problems is you have the Democratic Senate, the Democratic House, working to take an abysmal bill and an abominable bill and make it a merely horrible bill. <laughs> what we want to see happen is have the public get 48 hours to look this over, like every lawmaker, before we make an appropriation of up to a trillion dollars that could do more harm than good to working families, that could wind up retarding an economic recovery that we so desperately need, yes. and wind up putting us, as you point out, another trillion dollars in the hole. Now is not the time to make a trillion dollar mistake and expect things not to get worse. We have to be very judicious about this, and unfortunately, when the Republican Party puts forward a plan that creates twice the jobs at half the cost, we are told our services are not required. This is not how this process should work on behalf of the American people. Uh, Congressman Carter, thank you very much for joining us here, sir. All due respect, I've seen a lot of congressmen and senators on TV a lot uh, lately saying, we hate the idea, we can't believe we're going to spend a trillion and a half dollars, yada, 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 yet this thing seems to be sailing through. I mean, sailing through. We're talking a trillion and a half dollars in a matter of hours or days, not weeks or months. Why does this have to happen now so quickly and all of it up front? Well, I think that, unfortunately, first I pity you for watching people like me all the time. I suggest that you get a DVD player. <laughs> That's our job. The sec might stimulate, stimulate the economy. The other thing that I would like to point out is that you have Democratic control of the White House, Democratic control of the Senate, Democratic control of the House. Republicans in the House wanted to work with President Obama. We tried. We think he's in good faith, but the House Democrats did not. They had a bill that they rushed through. The Senate had a problem where they got three Republicans called it bipartisan and rushed it through. The danger now is that with disorder and economic chaos in the markets, if the government then becomes an entity that exacerbates that chaos, we can find no end to what a potential damage it could do to this economy. We need to be clear, we need an orderly process, and we have to get it right. We can't just do something, we have to do the right thing. This is not it. Congressman, I hope that all of the little brothers out there are watching the big brothers like you and not just letting big brother watch us. And to that point, I think Eric's underscoring, you know, whether it's $800 billion that you pass right now, is there any chance at all that maybe you guys can scale it down to, say, 50 or $100 billion that you're confiscating from the private sector and running through Washington, and then maybe come back to us and ask for another 50 or 100 if you actually prove that you could do something positive with the first tranche? Well, well, dude, first, I'm not big brother, I'm bald brother. So I don't like the fact that, that you're sitting there saying, you people are going to do this. Every single House Republican said no to a trillion dollar mistake that would do but more harm than but good. But you're still trying to push it through. It's just a matter of degree. You're for 600 billion, not 800 billion. No, the House Republican alternative was drastically different. It was scored up by the methodology of Christina Romer and others that created twice the jobs at half the cost. One of the fundamental aspects that we understood is that it is a monetary policy that you have to let people keep their money, have a chance to keep their jobs so they can keep in their homes. We go to the root fundamental problems affecting the American people. We do not do the Keynesian splurge tactic to try to spend our way into prosperity well, because we know that will not work. Congressman McCotter will ask hard. Christina Romer about that because she's going to be on our show in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, but you talked to Lloyd Blankenfein, John Mack, Vikram Pandit, Ken Lewis, Jamie Dimon, and all the other banking uh, giants uh, today uh, during that hearing. Overall, you know, it was very uh, civil, considering everybody, how the outrage the public is, um, even though some folks thought there would be a lot more fireworks there, uh, but the, they aren't aware how it all works. So bear with us, folks. According to the Washington Times, Wall Street executives and bank employee funded political action committees have donated more than two million dollars to politicians and that is since they gave the bailout to all those banks. Here are some recipients. Shelley Moore Capito, West Virginia Republican. She collected ten thousand dollars from the packs of Bank of America, Wells Fargo and Goldman Sachs. Another one, Dave Scott, David Scott, Georgia Democrat, collecting ninety five hundred dollars from political action committees of Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. And Barney Frank, chairman of the Financial Services Committee, also getting 9500 bucks from Wells Fargo and Goldman Sachs. But here's the thing, Congressman, uh, back in October when Congress was debating the bailout, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said this about our government officials, about you and the American people.
with this thing about trust in government and trust. You know, the, the, the American population, maybe the population of the world, and if you read history, we've seen this consistently. And oversimplification of issues and facts and kind of mob thinking and politicians who say all the time, not politically feasible. Not that it's wrong, just not politically feasible. So our politicians aren't leading, they're just, well, my constituent, my constituent doesn't like this, or what well, does it mean that they should just listen to what the, the, un, the uneducated part of a constituency thinks? Some of these people have no idea what they're talking about, and we shouldn't lie about that, we should be honest about that. Okay, Congressman, boy, you don't have, he's saying you don't have to know what you're talking about, you have an uneducated yeah. constituency, and... Uh, he, he seemed pretty uh, confident there as opposed to uh, how he was today. Let's get your reaction. Well, just two quick points, Rebecca. For a minute there, I thought I was hearing an ad for Franco in <laughs> Spain. But the other part of this is really quite simple to me. If we're so stupid, how come they're the ones that helped to destroy the world economy with their misdeeds, malfeasance? Amen so to that. Consider the source. The, the problem that I had today as a member of Congress, but more importantly as someone from Michigan, is I was watching people who were entrusted with the free market, the undergirding of our economy, and to know the damage that they have done long term to how Americans view the free market. They will view free market orientation, oriented politics through the lens of look what these people did when left to their own devices. The long term damage they've done has been lost upon them, and it is breathtaking their, how stolid they are about it. Congressman, however, That's a big I, word for those I, guys, I, I know. I, yes. I'd be remiss not to point out, sir, that you were in favor of Detroit getting some bailout money. Is that correct, sir? You're from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Because because of the misdeeds of Wall Street, which we heard ad nauseum today, and because of the CAFE standards and other environmental radically legislation that was put on them. I point out that just the week, last week or so, the president signed an executive order decimating the interstate commerce clause, so my car industry now has to make a car for 50 different states, potentially. I can't wait to hear how you went off on that. <laughs> Got to backtrack. Good stuff, Congressman. Thank you. Uh, thank you.